From KQED Public Radio, I'm Andrea Kissick with Quest, our weekly science and environment series. For the last 16 years, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory up in the Berkeley Hills has had the physics equivalent of a rusty pickup truck parked in its front yard. The Bevatron is a 1950s era atom smasher that was decommissioned in 1993. Now, President Obama's stimulus money is allowing demolition crews to finally dismantle the massive relic. Amy Standen reports. Sometimes science is like a series of crossroads. Either you understand it or you don't. Either it's there or it isn't. You get to a point where there's just a fundamental question you have to answer. Does it exist or not? Because where you go from here depends so critically on the answer to that question. Does it exist or not? Really, this story begins with a bomb. It was 1954, 10 years after the first atomic bombs had leveled Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Many of the same scientists who had helped develop America's nuclear arsenal had returned to the U.S. and they were starting to think about some of the most basic questions imaginable. How did the universe begin? And what is it made of? One of the places they came to ask those questions was here in the Berkeley Hills. Basically, we're now actually walking across what would have been the experimental area. That's Stuart Loken. He's a physicist with Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. And every day on his way to work, he passes by a decrepit-looking building about the size and shape of a small sports stadium. Its windows are knocked out. There's a junk pile of old doors and pipes in front. It's called the Bevatron. This was the highest energy accelerator in the world, and it was commissioned with one goal in mind, to produce experimental evidence for the existence of the antiproton. Yes, that's the antiproton. But first, let's back up, all the way up, to the event that physicists consider the very beginning of the universe, 14 billion years ago, the Big Bang. Any model of the Big Bang that makes any sense to us creates equal amounts of matter and antimatter from the vacuum. That's Persis Drell, director of SLAC National Accelerator Lab at Stanford. She says that matter is pretty straightforward. It's what makes up your coffee cup, your brain, the visible universe. Antimatter is a lot like matter, but the opposite. For every subatomic particle that makes up matter, there's a matching particle, an antiparticle, with the opposite electrical charge. But here's the problem. Scientists knew the antimatter had to be out there, but for the most part, they couldn't see it. Which is what brings us to one particular kind of antimatter, the antiproton. Again, Stu Loken. The antiproton was the thing that would confirm that there was, in fact, an antimatter world in addition to the matter world that we see every day. In other words, if scientists could produce an antiproton, it would mean that our understanding of the Big Bang and the makeup of our universe was basically on the right track. If not, well, it was back to square one. So they built the Bevatron to test that theory. Try and picture this. The experiment began with a thin cloud of hydrogen gas. First, scientists extracted protons from the hydrogen atoms and injected them into the accelerator chamber. As the protons whipped around and around the chamber, they went faster and faster until they approached the speed of light. You want to get to a high enough energy that when the particles smash together, you can turn that energy into the production of new particles. Which is exactly what happened. As the particles approached light speed, the Bevatron performed a feat Einstein himself had described with the equation E equals mc squared. That mass and energy are different manifestations of the same thing. Since mass and energy are essentially interchangeable, the Bevatron was able to transform matter into energy and energy back into matter. And in 1955, for the first time ever, antimatter. We smashed proton against proton, and then in the end we had proton, proton, antiproton, and another proton to balance. This work won Bevatron scientists the 1959 Nobel Prize in Physics. It was the first of four Nobels to come from research done here, as well as new insights into things like radiation treatment for cancer and how to keep astronauts safe from radiation in space. But by the late 1980s, the Bevatron had become obsolete. In 1993, it closed its doors for good. It is, says Stu Loken, the end of a, an era. Taking down the Bevatron is a huge endeavor. When it's finally demolished in 2011, it will have cost the country $72 million. Part of the expense comes from removing a protective layer of concrete blocks that once kept scientists safe from radiation released by the accelerator. Now those blocks must be hauled away to hazardous waste sites. 
Meanwhile, interest in particle physics is exploding. Soon, the world's most powerful particle accelerator, the Large Hadron Collider, will turn on in Switzerland. And after years of dwindling federal funding, physics research is picking up here, too, thanks in part to over a billion dollars in stimulus cash. Again, Persis Drell from Stanford's Slack National Accelerator Lab. This is just a huge change from the last eight years, and I welcome it, and I'm very optimistic that good things are going to happen. For Quest, I'm Amy Standen, KQED Radio News.